everything I give to you. We told them nothing. 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 Let's just go ahead and bless the name of the Lord. Let's worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Ancient of Days, the Beginning and the End, the Alpha and Omega, the In Between, the One who was, who is, and who is to come. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today. And um, forever, let us worship him. Just say a word of thank you to him. If you believe he has done anything good in your life in the last one week, say a word of thank you to him. Just let him know that you appreciate his keeping you. It is by his mercies that we are not consumed. Just say a word of thank you to him. And I now want you to praise him. Acknowledge him as your provider. Acknowledge him as your protector. Father, we acknowledge you, our defender, our help. The lifter up of our head. Father, we bless your holy name, O Lord. There is none like unto thee. You reign forevermore. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the almighty God. Father, you are the Savior of our soul. We worship you, Lord. There is none like unto thee. We bless your holy name, O Lord. You are our Father. You are a good Father. We worship you, Lord. We bless your holy name, O Lord. We say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for keeping us, O Lord. Even within the, all the troubles of this world, you have kept us away from all evil. Father, we bless your holy name, O Lord. We worship you. Even when the enemy has come, you have raised a standard against the, against the wise of the enemy. Father, we worship you, Lord. We glorify your holy name, O Lord. We exalt you, Lord. You are our peace. You are a very present help, even in times of trouble. You are the only one that we can run to. Father, we acknowledge your omnipotence in our lives. We acknowledge your omnipresence and your omniscience. Father, we worship you, Lord. You are our provider, our protector, our defender, our security, our safety our helper. You are our everything, Lord. Father, you are even our hope for the future. It is by you that we look forward to tomorrow and we have assurance that our tomorrow will be all right. Father, we exalt your holy name, O Lord. Say, be thou glorified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We glorify your holy name, O Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. In Jesus name we have worship. That amen does not sound like a believing amen. I said in Jesus name we have worship. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Assuming you want to make it louder. Praise the Lord. That is by your own power. Assuming you want to make it louder by the power of the Almighty God. Praise the Lord. I heard our father in the Lord say several times this last weekend that oh, my children will say that if your if the hallelujah of your of your neighbor is bigger than your own, then the blessing of your neighbor will be bigger than your own. If you want your own blessing to be bigger than that of your neighbor, can you shout hallelujah? Hallelujah! Amen. I perceive that that of your neighbor was louder than you. So I want to give you a second chance. Can you, some, can somebody shout hallelujah? Amen. Amen. Today's message will be kind of um, very different because I actually want us to take time out to pray. 
And you might wonder why. In the last two, three days, we have seen in our midst, we have seen at least three very, very, very close shaves with death. But the good thing is that we have somebody that is our protector who looks after us when we are not even watching. This is because we have a relationship with him and ahead of the trouble, he has gone ahead to take care of things. Why? It's also because it's primarily by virtue of his mercies, but also because we are in touch with him. That is why I would like us to pray for the future. Let the prayer go ahead of us. If there is anything that the devil is still planning concerning anybody, that we should stave it off. That's why the Bible actually talks about the fact that uh, we need to pray for those who have been appointed to die. So those who have been appointed to die, we have the power as a church, as a family, to come together to say no. We don't agree here that it is not yet time. Every evil appointment concerning any of you, I cancel in the name of Jesus Christ. I cancel in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're going to start by giving thanks to the Almighty God for that which he has done. I want to save you the details. I'm sure well, there will be a time that we'll have to share testimonies and then we'll be able to... Um, sorry? We'll come around to it. <laughs> now, I want us to first pray to first thank God. We will see share the testimonies and you will see that these cannot but be the hand of God. So let us go ahead and let us just say a word of thank you to the Almighty God for keeping us. For not allowing us in this that you have come to church to rejoice. It is not a time for you to mourn. Brethren, I trust me. If you came in here and we're talking about that somebody just died, you will not be happy. So let us give a word of thank you to the Almighty God. Let us thank Him. Let us thank Him for those deliverances that we, we saw and the ones that we did not even see. Let us say thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. 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 Father, we worship you, Lord. Father, we glorify your holy name, O oh Lord. We say thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the holy name, O oh Lord. Let us take this song. We, we give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We Open your mouth and just sing in appreciation of the Lord God Almighty.
has brought us this far is the one that is called omnipotent. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he did it yesterday, he is also still able to do more for us. He's going to deliver us from the snare of the fowler. That's what the Bible says. And I want to assure you, because you are linked to this God, your tomorrow will be all right. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He changed it not. And that's why I want us now, after giving thanks, we are going to pray ahead. That whatever is lying ahead of us in the remaining days of June and July and what of you, that the Lord will go ahead and take charge. Amen. I have a God who never fails. I have a God who never fails. I have a God who never fails, who never fails, who never fails. You can't sing this without dancing. I have a God. December, December 2024, I want to, December 2024, I want to give you a song that you'll be singing. I never knew you will honor me this way, Lord. I never knew you will honor me this way. I never knew you will honor me this way. Honor me this way.
Amen. 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 Now, I want to put a weapon in your hand. I want when we talk about a weapon, when a weapon is the hand is in the hand of anybody, the person can do anything with that weapon. It doesn't matter if the person is even a Christian. Or that's why you see some Muslims. They take the power, the weapon that is in the into the spiritual life of a Christian, they adopt those principles and they get blessed. So when the weapon is in somebody's hand, it can be deployed anytime. I want you to realize that you should pray ahead. You should pray what? You should do what? Pray ahead. When you pray ahead, you will see so many things that would have been taken care of even before you get there. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. The Bible says, and I want you to note this very, very clear, and that's why I call it a weapon. When you have this knowledge, knowledge is very, very powerful. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. The Bible says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Praise the Lord. Those are the people that you wrestle with as a child of God. So it means, because it talks about against principalities and power, spiritual wickedness. You cannot wrestle against spiritual wickedness with the knowledge that you have. There are so many things that are going on in this world that is not within your power. And that's why I'm going to take us to Psalm 91. And then we're going to pray ahead of the second half of this year. Psalm 91. Let's start from verse 5 there about. Or we can even start from verse 1. Let me show you where your address is. Praise the Lord. Some people wrote to me and they put Pastor Niyo Jolakwe, Psalm 91 verse 1. In the place where they should put the address. Psalm 91 verse 1. Let's see what it says. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the home. So they put my address as the secret place of the Most High. That will be your own address in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. I pray for you, for anyone that will answer believingly with a loud amen, that the secret place of the Most High shall be your dwelling place in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare that as your address in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is where you will be dwelling in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's go to verse 5. Uh, there are certain things there that I want you to see. These are not things that you read from somewhere. It's not from the enemy's camp. This is in the Bible. It says, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. That means there is something that is called terror by night. Then it talks about the, for the arrow that flies by day. This is the Bible talking about web, we're talking about possibilities. For now shall not for the arrow that flies by day. Let us let us even all read it together from verse chapter ninety one. Let's read from verse one to the end. Like I said, today is a special one. You are getting. We are praying ahead. From what we have seen, from the little that we have seen the last couple of days, I'm telling you, it is necessary to pray ahead so that God is already there, even before you get there. The Lord God will meet you at the point of your needs in the name of the Lord Jesus. So I want us to read it together, meditatively, as we go. And then I will explain one or two things concerning this to you, and then we will also pray with a couple of devices, and the Lord shall answer us in the name of Jesus. So one, two, go. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover me with His feathers. And under his wings shall I trust. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. I shall not be afraid for the terror by night, 
nor for the arrow that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at my side, and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because I have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, my habitation. There shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over me, to keep me in all my ways. They shall bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against a stone. I shall tread upon the lion and harder, the young lion and the dragon shall I trample under feet. Because I have set my love upon him, therefore he will deliver me, he will set me on high, because I have known his name. I shall call upon him, and he will answer me. He will be with me in trouble, he will deliver me and honor me. Verse 16, with long life will he satisfy me and show me his salvation. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Every time you come to church, you must take something home. Let me explain this psalm to you. This psalm is a psalm that has three characters. In this particular psalm, let's look, let's go to verse one now. You can can add verse 1, 2, and 3 if you, can, if you can project it together. They have three characters there. There is God speaking there. There is Jesus speaking there. And there is you there. If you see, it says, He that dwelleth in the sick place, most I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You don't really know who he's talking. Verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God will live in him will I trust. That is Jesus Christ. Speaking as an advocate for you. I will show you now. He said, I will say of the Lord. If 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 all started by saying, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high, talk, this, anybody that dwells in the secret place of the most high, this is where they are. Then he said, He's saying it that I will say of the Lord that He is my refuge and my fortress and my God. In him will I trust. Yes, now let's go to verse 3. He said, You can see the change in language. In terms of the subject, he said that, surely he shall deliver thee. So Jesus is talking about you there. He started by speaking, saying that this is what happens to those who dwell in the sick place of the most high. Then by verse 3, he said that, surely he shall deliver thee. So that is for you to know that he is now talking about you. He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. Then he goes on in verse 4 begins to talk about thee. Begins to talk about thee. He shall cover thee with his feathers. He shall do this. He shall do that. He shall do that. Now, when you get to verse, um, verse, um, verse 13. Let's say verse 13. Verse 13. For you to know, I'm talking about the third character now, so that you should, it should be very clear for you. He said, Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Still praying. So from verse 4 all the way, he's talking about what God will do for you if you dwell under the secret place of the Most High. Now, look at verse 14. See, he said, because he had set his love upon me. Therefore, this is now God speaking. He said that because you have set your love upon him, therefore, he will deliver you. He will set you on high because you have known what? His name. Verse 15. Verse 15. So this is God speaking. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. So he's saying that you, you will call upon him and he will answer you. That's why I want you to call upon him today. And he will answer you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Now he's talking about you in verse 16, which is the last verse. He says that with long life, Will it satisfy you and, you and show you his salvation? I pray for you that the Lord will satisfy you with long life in the name of Jesus Christ. 
the salvation, when he says that, and show him my salvation, he's not talking about being born again. He said that he will save you, even in times of trouble, even in the jaws of death, salvation will come for you. I pray for you, you will not die before your time in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will satisfy you with long life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And therefore, that's why I want us to just pray. There are certain things there. There are certain weapons there. Let's go to verse 5. We have, okay, we have, we, have, we have seen verse 5. Let's take verse 6 and 7 and 8. And I just want you to pray concerning this. To say, just declare concerning yourself and everybody around you, your children, your family, your loved ones, begin to pray. You say, okay, from verse 5, he says, from verse 5. Verse 5. Verse 5, he says, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, not for the arrow that flies by day. That means there is a terror by night. That means there is an arrow that flies by day. Verse 6. Verse 6 says, Not for the pestilence. There is a pestilence that walketh in darkness. That means when it's walking in darkness, that means that you cannot see it. It's a pestilence that you don't know because it's walking in darkness. And for the destruction that wasted at noonday. Verse 7. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but shall not come near. Brethren, let us take that verse 5 and verse 6. Let us begin to use it to pray that I will not be afraid of the arrows that walketh at noonday. Oh, verse 5. Go, go back to verse 5. Let us begin to pray. I want us to begin to pray. I shall not be afraid for the terror by night. Begin to pray that no terror by night will come near you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For me and my family and everyone that pertains to me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No arrow that flies by day will come near me in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No arrow that flies by day in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will come near me in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I recuse myself from any arrow that flies by day in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I recuse myself from the pestilence that walketh in darkness in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The destruction that wasted at noonday will not come near me in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though a thousand might fall by my side, 10,000 by my, my fall, by my right, and they will not come near me. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have made the Lord my refuge, the most high my habitation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for your brethren. Pray concerning them that no evil will befall them. No evil will befall you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No plague will come near your dwelling. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. And no plague will come near your dwelling. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Christ, that the Lord will preserve you. In your going out and in your coming in. The Lord will preserve you. The Lord will protect you. The blood of Jesus Christ will go ahead of you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Things will work for you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray, pray, that, pray that the Lord will protect you. And I want you to begin to plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Over yourself. Over everyone that pertains to you. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus Christ over everything that pertains to you as you go on in all that you do. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ over your job. Plead the blood of Jesus over your going out. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ over your, over your coming in. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ concerning everything that you are going to do in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ over everything that pertains to you. That in wherever you go, that the blood of Jesus Christ will avail for you. The blood of Jesus will avail for you in the place of protection. The blood of Jesus will avail for you in the, in, 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 in the place of defense. In the place of security. In the place of safety. As you go, as you come, the blood of Jesus Christ will be deployed on your behalf. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No evil will come near, near your dwelling. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the holy name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Why well, wait for the keyboards? I want you to sit down. Let me just tell you. Let me take the opportunity to give you just something about prayer. You already know this, but I want to put it together in a particular form for you so that you can take it home and it can be with you everywhere you go. Prayers has four major assignments in the life of a believer. Prayer has four major assignments in the life of a believer. First, for you to know, what is prayer? How often should we pray? What did they say that we should say concerning prayer? Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. The, the Bible says that, and he spake a parable unto them to this end. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. 
That what? And not to think. Please tell the woman beside you that it's not only men, it's also women. So don't, don't think it's only men. Men ought always to do what? To pray and not to faint. Because there is no way you will mention woman that man is not inside there. Praise the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. I'm just giving you the biblical foundation for you to know. Like our father in the Lord said that if you see anybody that is preaching and is not telling you where it is in the Bible, begin to check. Put question mark there. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 say, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Somebody asked that. How can we pray without ceasing? Just, it includes praying in your mind. You're on the road, you are just internalize it. Learn to speak to God all the time. Learn to put something, whatever you are saying, let it be with the knowledge that God is here. James chapter 5 verse 16. James chapter 5 verse 16. James chapter 5 verse 16. The Bible says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. Then he goes on to say, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So there are two prayers there that you can see. He say, pray one for another. So it's not just praying for yourself. Pray also for your brethren. And he says that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man does what? Availed much. Verse 18 of James chapter 5. James chapter 5, verse 18. The Bible says, James chapter 5, verse 18. The Bible says, and he prayed again. So, after praying, can I tell you another thing to do? Pray again. Praise the Lord. After praying, what should you do? Pray again. Verse 18 says, and he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth a fruit. As you pray, heavens will give rain for you in the name of Jesus Christ. The earth will bring forth its fruit for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mark 11 verse 24. I'm just telling you that it's necessary to pray. The Bible encourages us to pray. Mark 11 verse 24. Mark chapter 11 verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire... When ye pray, it is not if ye pray. It is not peradventure you pray. It is not perhaps you pray. Say, when ye pray, the Bible already takes it for granted that you will pray. Help me and tell your neighbor, you will pray. Pray for them that in the name of Jesus, you will pray. Even if you don't believe, even if you don't want to do, you will pray. The Lord will give you the strength to pray. When ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. That will be your portion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said that will be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. What are the four assignments of prayer that I mentioned? That's where it comes from. Number one, prayer, the assignment of prayer, one is for your growth and your transformation. When you are praying, one of the assignments of it is that prayer is for your growth and transformation. Luke chapter 9, verse 29. Luke chapter 9, verse 29. Luke chapter 9, verse 29. The Bible says that, and as he prayed, this is Jesus Christ. And as he prayed, as he was going to be transfigured, and as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. And his raiment was white and glistering. The Bible said that the fashion of his countenance was altered as he prayed. That means there was a transformation. A positive transformation from where he was or what he used to be before. Even Jesus, with all the anointing of heaven, when prayer came into his life, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. So prayer makes for transformation for you. Prayer makes for growth and transformation. And as you 
begin to pray in this season, there will be a transformation for the better for you in the name of Jesus Christ. That amen does not sound like you believe it. Praise the Lord. Also, you see, see it also in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. The Bible says that, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but what? Unto God. For no man understandeth him, albeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. There are levels in this life. There's a level of prayer. Then there is a way in which you can jack it up. Begin to speak. Men will not understand you. Because you begin to speak mysteries. That is what it means to speak in tongues. Are we together? That means to speak in tongues. Speak in the spirit. Now I can tell you that speaking in tongues is not a gift. It's not a spiritual. Some of you are expecting that one day, God, when you get PhD in Christianity, that um, the power will just come upon you. And then you begin to pray in spirit. No, 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 no. The moment you become a child of God, it is already in you to begin to speak it out. It's not going to happen by magic. Some of you don't believe it because you, are, you don't work it out. You even think those who are saying, maybe they are even uh, this thing. And then somebody asked me a question. He said, when they said that we should pray for protection, and you were speaking in tongues, it's the same thing that you were saying when they say we should give thanks. They are listening to you. That's what you are saying. Now, because you are trying to understand it in the physical, there is a spiritual aspect of it. it the Bible says it there that you speak at mysteries. You cannot understand it. These days, they don't teach this thing anymore. But there is what, when we were growing up in, in mathematics, there's what is called code theory. They call it code theory. It says, base theory, sorry, base theory, that when you look at figures, there is what you get from um, base one, there is base two, there is base three, but there is base four. If you are operating from base four, for example, you want to do addition on base four, no figure in that your base will be more than four. You'll be operating from three. So four will be like your 10. So when you want to say four plus four, which is, I mean, there's no four, there's nothing above four there. So three plus three, which is supposed to be six, you will write it as if it is 10. You will put 3 there. Then you will take the 3 as 1 to the next one. So it is base theory. So what you write as 4 plus 4 under base 4 is different from when somebody sees 4 plus 4 under base 8. It's different. But when you look at it, it's 4 plus 4. It is 4 plus 4. It is different. At the spiritual level, it is different. When somebody is speaking in tongues, it is mysteries. You cannot understand it. This piano, this piano that you are seeing, so there is a way I will play it and you can come and test it. They will tell you. If you are playing with uh, F, with F, it is, and you press this particular, these same buttons, the sound it will give you will be different from when you are playing in G. It will be different. And it is the same thing that you are pressing. When I play in C, it's going to be different from what you are seeing when it is playing from in, in uh, base E. Or what is it base or what we call E? It's different. So in the same manner, when you are praying in the spirit, it is different. People that are hearing, when they want to apply it physically, they will not understand it. And that is the meaning of what the Bible says, that they are speaking mysteries. Because for no man understandeth him. Don't try to understand my tongues. It's a communication between the one that we are, we are on the same frequency. Are we together? Now, let me explain also something about this prayer for you, praying in tongues. Many of us, we, we, are, we can't get there because it's like you are lying. You think well, when you begin to speak, it's like you see it as lying. I've told you before, but some of you don't agree with me, but I'm telling you again. If you don't know how to speak in tongues, listen to me when I'm speaking. Begin to imitate what I'm saying. Your own tongues will kick in. Are we together? There is what is called the gift. It's a spiritual gift. 
of speaking in tongues. There is also a spiritual gift. There are two of them. Of interpretation of tongues. That one is a gift. It's a spiritual gift. When we talk about spiritual gift in that wise, it is different from speaking in tongues as in, make, as in praying. They are two different things. The one that is a spiritual gift of speaking in tongues and interpretation of tongues, that is God speaking to man through man. So there is a message. So if you see anybody expressing, manifesting that spiritual gift, it is a gift. It's not given to everybody. When you see somebody manifesting that gift, the person is taking a message from God to human beings. And that's why it is said that it is very, very essential for you to operate that gift. There must also be somebody there who has the gift of interpretation of tongues. So that as you are speaking, because it is in tongues and it is mysteries, no man understandeth it. Because it is different, somebody has to be there to say, this is God speaking to his people. The one that you are speaking, which I said that you have as a child of God, the moment you get salvation, you are entitled to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and to be able to manifest by speaking in the Holy Spirit. The one that you speak when you are praying, you are speaking to God. You have a right to that. It is freely given. The one that God is speaking to man is the one that there is a message from God. That is the one that is a gift. But this one is a generalized gift that you need to do. Everybody must imbibe it. But where are we coming from? I'm saying you can pray. But there is a higher level also of praying. In fact, when our father in the Lord, that the Jew, when he talks about speaking in tongues, he said that you must speak in tongues like as often as a woman enters a kitchen. You know that women, when, even when they are not doing anything, they will just go there and just look at the place. Okay, let's just see whether it is clean. It's a different time that you are praying. It's a, um, it's a different time that you want to make food. It's a different time that you just want to go to the fridge and just take water. It's a different time. They enter their kitchen regularly. So our Father in the Lord said that it is as often, you should pray in tongues as often as a woman enters a kitchen. I, Ms. Nakati, you can take that, draw the line. Whenever you enter the kitchen, just blow some. God is hearing. It avails much. Just blow, just blow, just, it doesn't matter. And as an individual, I tell you this, I lie not. I tell you this, I lie not. There are many instances in my life that I have gotten to my end point. Maybe you get to a place, they say, you can't proceed further. You cannot see the man. Ah, and I just turned back. It was because one pastor taught us, so they just try it. It doesn't mean anything. I just turned back and said, then you feel the situation changes. It, I'm not saying once or twice. It has happened to me many, 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 many times. It has happened. You know, when it happens, you think, okay, maybe it's just a coincidence. But when it happens again and again and again and again, you know that there is power in there. So please, brethren, I want to encourage you. Elevate your prayers. Elevate the power of your prayers. Elevate the means of your prayer. Many of you, many of us we have, when you get bachelor's degree, you don't stop there now. You go on to get the master's, you go on to get So in the same manner, please elevate so that you begin to speak in tongues. And I've told you, don't worry, you might not open your mouth. Nothing will happen if you just open your mouth and be watching there. It won't happen. You will have to speak something. When you are speaking something, whatever it is, the Spirit of God will kick in. Like I said, that if you don't know, if you don't know how to speak in tongues or you don't get how to do it, listen to the person by your side. Begin to speak it. Yours will enter. And the Lord will answer you in the name of Jesus Christ. I was talking about four assignments of prayers. Eh? What is the first one? Some people did not hear from here. This Okay, praise the Lord. So you are listening. God bless you. Uh, I said God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> Number two. To obtain requests and to make petitions. Obtaining requests and making petitions. 
the assignments of prayer. Obtaining requests and making petitions. Prayer is the biblical platform for making requests. It is a biblical platform for asking and for getting. You go to a bank, you go to tender a check. When you get there, you are not just going to tender the check and go away. I want money. So you ask and you get. I pray for you as you pray. Answers will follow in the name of Jesus Christ. I said answers will follow in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why, and you have to continually pray because there are requests that you need to have. That's why our Lord's prayer says, give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. There is a daily allocation of prayers that you need to put out there so that you can get answers. As you pray, God will answer you in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three. I want to run now. Number three, it's for creation and spiritual legislation. I made sure to make it big English, to make it appear like a complex. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. Smile, Jesus loves you. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4. The Bible says, Where the word of a king is, there is what? Power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? Where the word of a king is, there is power. When you pray, because you are recognized as a king in the kingdom, there is what? Power there. And when there is power, when I talk about legislation, you are making laws. You, say, you go to, you enter your house or around you, you just draw a line that no evil spirit will come near this place. I draw a line. You plead the blood of Jesus Christ. You say no. There is no allowance. It is a law that everybody will respect. It is by prayer. It is what? By prayer. You make decrees. I must have told you this story before. There was a house in which uh, I was living in when I was way back in Abuja. That house, first, I, I did not have a place to stay. So I was staying with somebody. And then the person said, you guys said you are going to come here for only a month. It's now two months. So he kicked us out. That's me and my brother. So I'm like, okay, what are we going to do? So, but I know that there was a in our company, in our organization, they, they rented four apartments for the directors. So three are already staying there. So the fourth one has been allotted for this particular director, but then he used to travel a lot, so he's not, he wasn't staying there per se. He's just occupied one room there. So I went to meet him, Dr. Atta, please. Let me have just one room. Let me just have somewhere. So he had pity on me. He said I should occupy that room. Just one room as you enter like this. So, you know, when you come to church, I say you are collecting weapon, weaponry. You might not even know the power. Though. So, it wasn't too long before then that they were teaching us in church that wherever you get to, once your feet step there, you take it over. With anointing oil, and this is so. As I entered the house, I was just doing my own. I wasn't, I anointed every door in that house, everywhere and I anointed it. I said, I take charge of this place. Nobody operates here except I say so. In the name of Jesus Christ, I took anointing. I, I mean, I even overdid it. Every door, every wall, every entrance, I put anointing. I just did my own. Um, in a short while, I will save you the details of the story. Doctor Atake said, "I don't like this house again." <laughs> say somehow, he went. That is a company house. So we're not paying anything. He left that place two doors away, as in practically two doors away. He went to rent to pay. That, that, that apartment was three-bedroom apartment. 
So I'm just telling you that we're in, we're in the same area. So it's not as if he went to an eye, uh, eyebrow or whatever place. Two doors away from where we were. It was a three-bedroom apartment. He moved and went to pay for a two-bedroom apartment. Left me in this place. I lived in that house for seven years. I married my wife there. Like that, free of charge. With the benefit of hindsight, the moment I got into that place, I took charge. I took charge of the place. So that is the essence of prayer as a legislation. You say it, that this is what I want to be happening in this place, and you take, I did not, in my mind, I wasn't taking over the house from him. I'm not wicked. I'm not saying that I want to take over. But then, because wherever the word of the king is, there is power. Once I said it, that was what happened. Praise the Lord. So it's for creation and spiritual legislation. Isaiah 43, verse 26. Isaiah 43, verse 26. Isaiah 43, verse 26. The Bible says, put me in remembrance. Let us play together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. When you go before a court and they're asking you a question, you must have something to say. If you don't say anything, you'll not be justified. When you declare, that's when you begin to get justification. And that will be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Number four, warfare and intercession. Number four, warfare and intercession. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. The Bible says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. There's a lot that is loaded into that, but let me just explain it in brief. When you are praying, it is in the place of prayer that you also win wars. There are many wars that are going on, like we told you that you wrestle not against. It is in the place of prayer that you fight that war. It is in the place of prayer that you fight that war. Also, it's the place of prayer that you intercede for people. You say, oh, this one, that's what he's saying here. You stand in the gap before me for the land. God expects somebody to at least plead the cause of others for him to be able to do this. And therefore, that's why I want you to pray today. I actually want to pray for you too. Last week, we had Father's Day. And still in that spirit of Father's Day, I don't want it to go like that. There must be something that we will do that will show that, okay, there is a father in this house, and you will receive the blessing of the father. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I want us to pray. But before we pray, I want you to look into the future. What do you want to see? What do you want your prayers to achieve? That's why we need that hymn. Rise up to your feet. Let us sing this hymn. La, 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 la. La 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 now, before we sing it, I want you to have an understanding of where this is coming from. This is the theme hymn that we're singing in camp over this last weekend. Because there's the Redeemed Christian Church of God convention that has just taken place. And this is the season. Even though we went to camp and we sang it, it's, it's good to bring it home for you to log into it. Whatever blessing God decide, God has decided to give to his people as a result of adopting this aim for this period. I don't want you to miss out of it. The blessing will be yours in the name of the Lord Jesus. So I want you to sing it meditatively. And you are looking at till the end of the year, what are the things that you should be seeing? Okay, mother. We will soon shout hallelujah. Because 
us, God will do new things. Sinners will soon be forgiven. Prodigals will come home soon. Shout hallelujah, because God will do new things. Rivers in desert now flowing. Hallelujah to our King. We will soon shout hallelujah, because God will do new things. And sorrow will be gone, bondage will be forgotten. Shout hallelujah, because God will do new things. Rivers in desert now flowing, hallelujah to our King. Soon shout hallelujah because God will do new things. The barren will be fruitful soon, failure will be forgotten. Shout hallelujah because God will do new things. Rivers that now flowing hallelujah to our king we will soon shout hallelujah because god will do new things poverty will be forgotten stagnancy will soon be gone shout God will do new things To all miracles I give There shall be celebration Shout hallelujah Because God will do new things Rivers in desert now flow we will soon shout hallelujah because God will do new things. Many will have testimonies of prayer. Hallelujah. Do new things. 
Shout hallelujah. Can I hear somebody shout hallelujah? In expectations of the new things that God will do, shout hallelujah. Because God will do new things, shout hallelujah. In your life, in your family, in our midst, shout hallelujah. Amen. Now I want you to pray for yourself first. And I want us to pray what is called the prayer of Jabez. First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10. First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10. There are certain prayers there. Just, even if you don't believe it, just pray it. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. So when they ask, you say, me, I prayed. Even if it doesn't, you say, I prayed. And I know that God has a duty to answer. First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10. The Bible says, and Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh! That thou will bless me indeed. I want you to declare, I want you to begin to declare that by the mercy, that the mercy of the Almighty God, let your blessing rest upon. Say with me, say, Father. I want you to say it believingly. Say, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus, let your blessing rest upon me. I activate the blessing upon my life. Go ahead and begin to declare it. Let your blessing rest upon me, Lord. The blessing is upon me. Declare, I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the country. Blessed in the family. Blessed in my work. Blessed in my children. Blessed in my career. Blessed in my spirit. I am blessed in my soul. Blessed in my body. Ah, begin to declare. Blessed are those who bless me. Blessed are those who bless me. In everything I do, I'm blessed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Please just hang on with me in Genesis chapter 9 verse 1. God bless Noah. And he said, the Bible says that, And God blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth. In verse 7, there was a repeat of it. And I want to make a point from this so that you can pray. In verse 7, he says, And you, be ye fruitful, and multiply, and bring forth abundantly in the earth, and multiply therein. You remember that in chapter 1 of Genesis, when God created, in chapter 3 of Genesis, when God created man, what, what he said was that, okay, be blessed. That said, be ye fruitful and multiply. And that you should, be, you should bring forth abundance. It means that when God says, when God talks about blessing, the meaning of blessing is that you should be fruitful and that you should multiply. Can you begin to pray for yourself? I'm blessed. And that means that I'm going to be fruitful and that I will multiply and I will replenish the heart. The will of God concerning blessing for me shall be manifested. I'll be fruitful. I'll be fruitful. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'll multiply and I'll bring forth abundantly. I'll replenish the earth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll replenish the earth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll replenish the earth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Begin to declare for yourself as a result of the blessing that is upon me, I speak to my destiny. Can you please place your hand upon your head and say, I speak to my destiny that I am blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? And God bless Noah and his sons, and God bless Neojolakbe and his sons, 
and God bless the Zara of Nation and his sons, and God bless PBC and his sons, and God bless us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we'll be fruitful, we will multiply and we'll replenish in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So shall it be. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. The prayer of Jabez. The first thing was I said, Jabez called unto God saying, Oh, that thou will bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that thy hand might be with me. That thy hand might be with me. Say, enlarge me and that thy hand might be with me. First, when you talk about enlargement, you know, it is the same thing if you live in an apartment, if it's a studio apartment, you have a space. It's a different thing when you live in a townhouse where you have three bedrooms and all of that. What you have in the studio apartment is also what you have in the townhouse. Because you have, you have your room there, you have a place where you can play, you have a kitchen, you have a bathroom, you have it, you have it in, a, in a certain place. But when you talk about a three-bedroom apartment, it means that you have space, you have more. The studio apartment restricts you. It constricts you. That's why I want you to pray that God should enlarge me so that I have more space, so that I can serve you better. Begin to pray. Say, Father. I can't hear you. Say, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, enlarge me. Enlarge my coast in every good way. Enlarge my coast in money. Enlarge my coast. Spiritually, enlarge my coast. Materially, enlarge my coast. Physically enlarge my coast in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, enlarge our coast in the of Nations family. Enlarge our coast in PBC. Enlarge our coast in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, enlarge me. Enlarge me round about. Enlarge me in a good way. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. There is another aspect of their prayer. He said, let your hand be with me. If the hand of God is with you, that is what is responsible for advancement. When God is with you, that's where you can show up and they look at you and they say, your accent seems funny, but I just love it anyway. That's when you can show and they say, ah, the man is very short. But that is actually who we are looking for in this particular. Oh, the man is very tall. Yes, you know what? If a tall person joins us, that's nice. That's why you come and you say, oh, is he a male or female? And you say, oh, he's a, he's a male. Eh, yes, we have too many females there. We, have, we need a male here. It will just work out in some way. That is also, when, when, when God is with you, that is also what is responsible for speed. What, you, what others take 10 years to achieve, you achieve it in one year. Where you are right now is not where God is taking you to. You are just on the way. I want you to begin to pray. Say, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. By your hand. By your hand. Advance me. Advance my destiny. Advance me in every area of life. Give me speed. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Double click on that word. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, Christ, Father, by your hand, be with me, Lord. Advance me. In the name of Jesus Christ, advance my destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, advance my destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, advance me in every area of life. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Jabez also prayed. And this is to tell you that even when you are praying for good things, the Bible says that you should not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. It's, he also said, keep me from evil. Our Lord's prayer also said something like that. That we should keep evil away. So while praying for good things, don't forget. Pray that God should keep you from evil. Don't ever think that evil cannot come to you because you have not bothered anybody. No. The way life is wired is that if things are going well for you, that's when evil can come. If things are not going well, that is also when evil can come. You never, there is Because it is in the Lord's prayer and the Lord's prayer says that we should pray it every day. That means that there is a there is a daily allocation of evil. You will not know of it in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Matthew chapter 6 verse 13. Matthew chapter 6 verse 13. The Bible said, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Why? Because thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. The God that you are praying to is the one that has the power. He's the one that has the kingdom. He's the one that has the glory forever. But then you still must pray. Because if you, if you say you are not praying, the devil is ready anyway to do evil. I pray you will not meet with the evil of this day in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I say you will not meet with the evil of this day in the name of Jesus Christ. So we have to understand the warfare dimensions of this life. Lift up your hand and say, would you say, Father, Father, by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of the eternal covenant, keep me away from evil. Every covenant, every covenant, tie me to failure. Let them be broken now. Let them be broken now. Every covenant, every covenant, tie me to defeat. Let them be broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every covenant. Time into weakness. Let them be broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every covenant. Time into evil. Let them be broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every covenant. Time into yokes. Let them be broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every covenant. Time into ordinances. Let them be broken now. Keep me away from evil. Keep evil away from me. In the name of Jesus Christ, keep me away from evil. Keep evil away from me. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Almighty God, be with me. Help me. Keep evil away. In the name of Jesus Christ, keep evil away. In the name of Jesus Christ, keep evil away from me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep evil away from me. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus name we have prayed uh, that your amen is not commensurate with the prayer now you recall when Jacob called his children he began to bless them Isaac also at some point even called his children called his son he blessed him that particular blessing that Isaac blessed Jacob is different from the one where you categorize it's different from the one that Jacob blessed his children. When Isaac was going to bless him, mm, you know what? I have a special bless. I have something special for you today. Go and bring me, go and cook food for me. The one that I like, the way I like it, go and bring it. So the guy went to bring it. I mean, forget who, whoever brought it. And then he brought it and then the man ate it and he was happy. By the time he blessed him, the, this other guy came and said, Ah, I've blessed him. The way it made me happy, I've blessed him. And it cannot be changed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And let me pray for you. Because you know what? It was by the hand that this guy brought it. The father was not believing the voice. But the hand with which the man brought it. And it is spiritually significant. That was what the man told and said, okay, yeah, yeah, it is, the, it is Esau, not knowing that it is Jacob. I pray for you. Any evil hand will not be able to snatch away your blessing in the name of Jesus. But he came anyway. He gave him that food. The man ate it. And he was so happy, he blessed. As a father of this house, I want to bless you today. But I'm going to bless you on credit. You have not brought food yet. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to be blessing you, like I said, on credit. When the blessing of this prayer comes, I'm expecting you to come and tell me. Praise the Lord. So lift up your hands and let us, let us just give a word of thanks to, Lord, to the Lord God Almighty for this time to pray. That for this blessing that is coming upon you, I thank you, Lord, in advance. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ. The Bible says that in Matthew chapter 7, verse 9 to 11, the Bible says, Of what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, 
will you give him a serpent? If you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? I pray for you as a father over this house. I pray for you that may the Lord God Almighty, our Jehovah Shama, may he be a father unto you this week in the name of Jesus. As we go into the second half of the year, I pray for you that the Lord God Almighty, the multiple breasted one, he will be a father unto you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you go to the rest of this year, I pray for you. The Lord God Almighty will grant you bread abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ. He will grant you bread in due season in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the Lord God Almighty will go ahead of you this rest of the year. He will grant you fish abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ. He will grant every good thing for you in due season in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord God Almighty will grant you good things in the name of Jesus. He will grant you good things in due season in the name of Jesus Christ. Before you ask, the Lord will arise to give unto you in the name of Jesus. You will testify of the goodness of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. In fulfillment of this Father's Day week, any good gift that a father will normally give to his children, I pray they will manifest in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for the angels of the living God to go ahead of you for the rest of the year and make every crooked way straight in the name of Jesus. The angels of the living God, I pray that they will go ahead of you Bring down every mountain in the name of Jesus Christ. They will level every valley in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord God Almighty will send angels ahead of you to the camp of your enemies. One angel entered into the camp of the Assyrians. By the next morning, 185,000 of them have died. Everybody gathered together against you. Angels of the living God will go into their midst in the name of Jesus. He said, because in garden they shall gather, but not by him. But that anyone that gathers together against you, that they will be brought down. That prayer will be manifested in the name of Jesus. It also says that every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. They shall be condemned in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will be with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every negative thing in your life, I bury it today in the name of Jesus Christ. Any negative pronouncement that is working in your life, today in the name of the Lord Jesus, I turn them around. They will be turned them around for good in the name of Jesus. You are a child of this house. The redeemed Christian church of God all over the world is known to be a prosperous ministry. Every tree must bear fruit according to its kind. Because this mission is a prosperous ministry, you will be prosperous in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not know poverty in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. RCCG is a very prosperous organization. It's a very, very prosperous mission. I declare unto you, you will not go broke in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not go broke in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that is not of God in your life, everything that is not of God in your body, Everything that the Lord has not planted in your life, I command them to give way now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command, to, I command them to give way now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you, the blessing of the Lord that is upon this mission, it will work for you in the name of Jesus. In your workplace, it will work for you. In your career, it will work for you. In your family, it will work for you. In the society, it will work for you. In your going now, it will work for you. In your coming in, it will work for you. In your speaking, it will work for you. In your action, it will work for you. So shall it be. But we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let somebody go ahead and just give thanks to the Almighty God.